One of the advantages that JSON columns have is that it's indexable, but do you know how to properly set up index on your JSON type columns? Well, let's dive in and take a look. In this people table, we have 1 million rows. And here's what the data could look like. We have some name, text, hobby, an array, height, it's an integer, and some address, which is a nested object. Let's go into the SQL editor. We can start with a simple query. Let's query everyone whose name is Tyler and see how many we get back. And this query is gonna take a while. And the query returns one. Now the reason why this query took so long is because we don't have indexes on the metadata column. So let's add one. We can say create index, give it a name. We're gonna call it people metadata index. This index is going to be on the people table and we are going to use a gen index on the metadata column. Let's run the SQL and create the index. Gen stands for generalized inverted index and it's a unique type of index that's often used with nested data structures such as JSON and arrays. Okay, the index has been added. We can go back and run the query and almost immediately get our results back. Great, the index is working. Let's add explain analyze to confirm this. And see the breakdown. We can see that it took 0.2 milliseconds to execute, and we can confirm that people metadata index was used. This gen index on the metadata column can be used for JSON specific operators. For example, we can query those rows with height field. Again, the query runs very fast. We can even have more complex nested objects using the at symbol. Something like hobby is basketball and tennis and address is in country Japan. Again, very fast, 4.5 milliseconds. So this gen index is very powerful and useful. One catch though, is that it has to be used with a JSON operator. So these at symbol or question marks. If you want to perform equality search, for example, if metadata name equals Tyler, this is not going to be able to use the index. So it's going to take some time. Again, you can see that the index hasn't been used. The way we can do this is we can modify the query so that it'll actually use the JSON operator. So we can modify it to be like this. And then it'll run fast because it can use the index. We can also set an index on a subfield of a JSONB column. For example, what if we want to do this? What if we want to search for hobby containing basketball? This is not going to be able to use the index, so it's gonna take some time. What we can do is either we can modify it using the other operator or we can create a new index. We can call it uh, people metadata hobby index and we can index the hobby field. So let's create this new index. And we need to wrap this entire thing in another parentheses. Let's create the index. Again, this is gonna take a bit because we have 1 million rows, but now it's done. Let's run this query. And as you can see, it runs fast and we can confirm that it's using our index. The index size is going to be smaller if you set an index on a particular property. So it's always better to set an index for a particular property if, if you know that you are only going to query for a particular property. Otherwise, you can always set an index on the entire JSONB column if you're unsure of how you're gonna be querying your database. Now you should know how to store data in a JSONB column, query data from a JSONB column, add constraint to your JSONB columns, and how to add indexes to your JSONB column. If you are unsure any of these, then you can take a look at this video right here. I'll see you around. Bye.